this morning on CBS 2 News, suing the Boise Police Department, why one family is calling for justice. Plus, overdose, death, overdose deaths on the decline, why Idaho now doubling down on prevention. Plus, recovery continues following Hurricane Ian, the hefty price tag taunting those looking to rebuild. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you of downtown Boise. It is Tuesday, October 4th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. And let's start our morning off with Marcos Guadarrama at a, with a first look at your weather forecast. A nice chilly start to your Tuesday morning right now. Currently 55 degrees out there. Southeast winds at eight miles an hour. We're going to have a nice chilly morning before we warm up once again as that high pressure continues to build in the region. Morning temperatures right now, uh, mid 50s for this morning, getting into the 60s there by 10 a.m. Uh, 66 there, uh, mid 60s by 11 a.m. and then 70 there by noon this afternoon. Looking at our current temperatures right now, 49 out in the Caldwell area, 48 in Ontario, Idaho City there at 38 in the Mountain Home region at 45 degrees this morning. Now we are going to continue to see those higher temperatures. This is our normal for this time of year, 72. Yesterday's high, 77. Now today we're going to be a couple degrees warmer than that. A look at some of our high temperatures, 80 in Boise. 79 Mountain Home, Idaho City there 77 and then the Ontario area at 82 and then there's Baker City at 79. Looking at your uh, Treasure Valley Adventure Cast this morning, uh, 70s there by noon and then 80 there by 6 p.m. But going to be a good day to get out there and go for a, for a walk or a run this morning. So a look at what to expect, a dry week, 80s, sunny all week and no change for now. And no complaints here. Thank you, Marcos. 502 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, looking good out there this morning. A few headlights making their way through, but no reports of anything slowing you down. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we have new information on the double murder in Adams County over the weekend. The Adams County Sheriff says around 12.45 p.m. on Saturday, a call came in about a shooter at the Heartland Inn in New Meadows. When deputies and a medical team got there, they found both Sarah and Rory Meehan dead. Officials say 28-year-old John Hart murdered them and then drove away from the inn in a blue Subaru heading south on Highway 95. An off-duty deputy driving back into the county saw him on the road and got a hold of working deputies to pull him over. They did that north of Cambridge and arrested him. Hart is now in Washington County Jail, facing two counts of first-degree murder. And the family of a man shot and killed by Boise police last October, now suing the department. The officers got a call he was trying to jump from an overpass. Investigators say as police approached him, Snow took a shooting stance and pulled out an object. That's when officers fired. The object was later found to be a portable speaker. I want justice for my son. I called 911 because my son's mental health was in crisis. And they responded by killing him. In a statement from the city of Boise, the Gem County prosecutor determined, quote, officers acted in self-defense and his office would not be taking any action. CBS2 reached out to Boise police for comment, but a spokeswoman told us that because of any pending litigation, they cannot provide any additional information right now. Well, police in California are searching for a family of four after authorities say they were abducted. Now, the sheriff's office says an eight year old girl, her parents and her uncle were taken against their will. Now they're pleading for help for any information. So far, we have no idea why the kidnapping. We have no motivation behind it. We just know that they are gone. We've got evidence to indicate that uh, the individuals involved in this destroyed evidence in an attempt to cover the tracks. The sheriff's office, they released images of the man believed to be the suspect. Now authorities say there hasn't yet been a ransom demand or any attempt at contact. 
Well, catalytic converter thefts, they're a growing problem across the U.S. And today, and today only, you can get your car etched at Nampa car dealerships to help deter some of those thieves. So today, as well as tomorrow, keep that in mind, at Mark Toyota, they'll etch for free from 9 to 5 o'clock. It's all in partnership with Nampa police who continue, they say, to see more and more thefts. Now, if you can't make it out this week, there will be another etching event taking place at Peterson Dodge. That's on October 15th from 9 to 4. Again, that's next Saturday. We have those dates, times, and places on our website. Police say the etching may make thieves decide not to steal your catalytic converter since it can't be traced. Well, data from Health and Welfare this year isn't fully complete. It does look like overdoses may have killed fewer people this year compared to the last two years. Now, up to July, data tracked by Health and Welfare shows 148 lives lost to overdoses in Idaho. Now, that is 55 fewer than that date back in 2021. Now, what may help keep those numbers low is millions of dollars from the federal government coming to Idaho, helping fight the overdose crisis. Our own Angela Kernel shares how it'll be spent. To save people's lives. That's the goal of Idaho's response to the opioid crisis program. They're your friends and your family. Part of it, expanding access to critical tools like overdose reversal medications, Narcan, and naloxone. The problem is it's awful, but there's also a lot of work being done to address that. The Idaho Harm Reduction Project helps people and organizations across the state access tools like naloxone, whether by mail or reaching people struggling with addiction where they are. Syringe service programs and like the mass distribution of overdose reversal medications and education about them have only been a thing since 2019 and really ramping up in 2020. And so I think it's increased dramatically from year to like year over year. Evan Burke works with the Harm Reduction Project. He says more money for them could mean saving more lives. They're expensive uh, and we want everyone to have access to them and that requires significant resources. Last year, his organization gave out about 5,000 boxes of Narcan across the state, saving at least 628 lives. Due to the rural nature of the state, having naloxone on hand can be really helpful because just the distance that EMS sometimes has to travel to somebody's location can take a long time. And more people with naloxone means more people surviving overdoses. This stuff is, is kind of happening a lot. Uh, and so the, the more of us that are informed and have this resource available in terms of sort of Narcan or naloxone, um, just the safer the community and the society is. Now, anyone on Medicaid, they can access naloxone for free without a prescription at most local pharmacies. Now, you can also go to our website for how to order them online. Well, the death toll keeps climbing following Hurricane Ian as it devastated parts of Florida's Gulf Coast, especially around Fort Myers. More than 100 people are dead, over half a million still without power. Now, rescue crews, they're going door to door in hard hit areas. They brought more than 2,000 people to safety. Cars lining up for bottled water as the hurricane's far-reaching impact stretches into its second week. We finally got water last night. But, yes. it's, but it's yucky water. Now they're looking to rebuild after Hurricane Ian, which was one of the worst storms to ever hit the U.S. It's expected to cost a billion dollars. Now, President Biden will visit Florida tomorrow to see the damage in person. In the meantime, teams in Florida are cooking up a storm for survivors of Hurricane Ian. A disaster response team from World Central Kitchen. They're shutting up, setting up shop in Tampa to help those in need. Being able to show up with a hot, comforting, nourishing plate of food, um, you know, is our way to show that we're thinking of you and we care about you. And, you know, we want to do what we can to get you through this difficult time. In the meantime, hundreds of volunteers are making their way to Florida to help feed families. As many as 20,000 meals a day being given out for food distribution in those hardest hit areas. Well, Marcos Ashley, we are officially kicking off Tuesday and it is looking like it's going to be a beautiful week ahead. Uh, Marcos, you're saying not much change from what we saw yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, very little change in the forecast, Sarah. Going to continue to see that high pressure bring warmer conditions into the area. Today, about three degrees warmer than yesterday. A look at our coffee uh, forecast for today. Sunny and warmer, our high today 
80 degrees. Our high yesterday was 77, so uh, yeah, about three degrees there warmer. That out the door forecast for today as you head out the door though, uh, mid 50s this morning. Uh, 66 there at 11 a.m. and then 70s there at 1 p.m. We should be getting, as I said, 79, possibly 80 there by uh, 5 p.m. this afternoon. That sunshine is going to be sticking around there, folks. So another week to enjoy those nice warmer conditions. Current temperatures, though, 53 out in Meridian. Uh, 49 out in Caldwell, 46 out in the Nampa region. And then we have a nice uh, mid 40s there, Mountain Home, upper 40s there in the Glens Ferry area, and then 40 for our friends out in McCall this morning. For tomorrow, going to be warming up a little more, three degrees there, 83, uh, but uh, your morning's going to continue to be in the mid 50s there, 70s by noon, and then of course that sunshine once again sticking around all week. Bus stop forecast, mid 50s this morning. 70 there by lunchtime drop off for today 77 degrees so uh, possibly wear a light jacket this morning as you head out the door and uh, folks uh, enjoy that nice warmer weather this week uh, little to no change so sun is going to be out temperatures in the 80s as i said that high pressure and uh, sunshine continuing into the weekend sarah thank you marcos 511 on your tuesday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, looking good out there this morning. It is 511, by the way. Uh, no reports of anything looking to slow you down, both on our main roads or secondary roads. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, five people on trial after the January 6th attack on the Capitol, the charges the Oath Keepers are facing. Plus, the former president may have had a hand in midterm elections, his influence on the primaries, and what may change come November. Well, hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Nearly 20% of people have already done this ahead of October. That answer? Buying their Halloween candy. Yeah, it's coming up quick, folks. Now for today's question. This is the most commonly lost item in North America. Hmm. Okay, folks, what do you think it is? Taking a look at your local forecast in Emmett today, sunny conditions with a high of 81 tonight, clear with lows in the upper 40s and tomorrow sunny with a high of 82. Thank you, Marcos. Well, the January 6th committee says it plans to hold its final hearing next week. In the meantime, five alleged members of the far right Oath Keepers group, they're on trial for their involvement in the Capitol riot. Now that trial underway in Washington, D.C. federal court is against founders of the Oath Keepers and four additional members. Now, Elmer Stewart Rhodes and his associates, they're charged with seditious conspiracy in connection with January 6th. They could face up to 20 years in prison. Now, the five defendants have pleaded not guilty. And former President Trump's influence is being felt in midterm races across the country. Nearly 200 candidates endorsed by the former president won their primaries. But that may be a different story come November. George Washington University professor Todd Belt studies election trends. He says former President Trump's endorsement may not see the same effect in the general election. A lot more Democrats are being coming out. A lot more moderates are going to be coming out. And so those Trump voters that have been very, very helpful in the primaries aren't going to be able to carry the day. Some Trump backed Candidates now representing the party in swing states, including Arizona, Ohio, and North Carolina, have falsely claimed the 2020 presidential election was stolen. Some Republicans are concerned the rhetoric could set a dangerous precedent, leaving a potential split in the party ideology and identity. Well, before we go, we want to let you know today a very special day. It's National Taco Day. Now, October 4th is the day to chow down. And wouldn't you know it, this year it falls on a Tuesday. So go ahead and stuff your shell hard or soft with whatever your heart desires. So Marcos, Ashley, I need to know, first of all, what is your favorite taco place in the Treasure Valley? We need to know that first. And then are you a soft shell or a hard shell person? 
I have not found a favorite taco place, so I'm open to suggestions. Yeah, no, definitely. Marcos, do you have one? That's a very hard question. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It's a very hard question, guys. Yeah, I, I like the taco trucks, and I'm more soft, uh, soft tortilla. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. with you on that one. No, definitely. Yeah. We're gonna but have I love, I love a good taco. So. Oh. Yeah, you can't go wrong, and especially on this Tuesday, the weather's looking perfect. If you want to eat some of those tacos, maybe out at a park or even just outside, it's going to be great. Yeah, going to be a nice day to get out there. Enjoy that sunshine, folks. That high pressure bringing us warmer conditions for today, but starting off by our current temperature, 55 degrees. Southeast winds are at 8 miles an hour. That's downtown Boise. Current temperatures right now across the valley, 49 Caldwell, 46 Nampa, and then 50s there out in the Meridian area as you start your Tuesday. Probably get a light jacket as you head out the door. Mid 40s Mountain Home, uh, upper 40s there, Glens Ferry, the McCall area, 40 degrees, and then Baker City there at 38. Our highs for today, about three degrees warmer than yesterday. 80 Boise, 79 Mountain Home, uh, Caldwell there, 79, and Ontario there, 82, folks. As, as I said, that high pressure will be building uh, those uh, in the region, so bringing us those warmer temperatures. Our future cast, things are looking pretty clear. May see some gusty winds this afternoon in the mountain region, but overall staying fairly clear and fairly dry for the next several days. So a dry week, highs in the low 80s, sunny all week, and then really no change for right for right now. That extended forecast, sunny skies, nice, um, uh, gonna be low 80s throughout the week, 81 there tomorrow, 82 Thursday, 81 there Friday, and then 80 there on Saturday, lows in the 50s. Same thing for the mountain region, mid 70s throughout the week, 76 tomorrow, 75 partly cloudy there by Friday, and lows in the upper 30s. Love it. Thank you, Marcos. 518 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there this morning. Not much to report. Um, main roads and secondary roads looking good. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And before we go, here's today's Traffic Tip Tuesday from Boise Police Corporal Kyle Wills. Hello everybody, it's Corporal Wills back with another Traffic Tip Tuesday. Today I want to talk about, first of all, this beautiful weather we're having. That means it's fall in Idaho. Well, fall in Idaho also means that we have a few more slow moving vehicles on our roadways. Primarily, typically in Idaho, from farm equipment and farm machinery. So what do we do as drivers when we approach those slow moving vehicles, number one? And if we're the one driving the slow moving vehicle, what is our requirement? So I wanna hit on both of those things. First, the easiest one is if we are driving the slow moving vehicle, we need to make sure that it's below 25 miles an hour. You can't consider yourself a slow moving vehicle above 25 miles an hour in the state of Idaho. Number two, we need those four way flashers on and we need a slow moving vehicle sign in the back and that's typical the orange triangle that you see at the back of a piece of equipment, uh, farm equipment, tractors, that sort of thing. So if you're in that slow moving vehicle, please make sure that, that you do that. Now, as an added protection and added piece of safety, a lot of folks will use a pilot vehicle along with it. It may just be a second vehicle, a pickup or something with its four, four way flashers on. And that's certainly always a good thing because it's extra safe, although it's not required by our law. Now, as a driver, as we approach those vehicles and even here in Boise, we'll often come up behind those slow moving vehicles, those tractors trying to move from one field to another. What is our responsibility and what do we do? I think the biggest thing we want to remember is we want everybody to get to where they're going safely, first of all. So getting frustrated or angry or driving aggressively around that equipment is not going to help anybody, whether it's the driver or those around the, the slow moving vehicle. So we encourage you to just slow down, understand that that's part of the Idaho way of life is that we're going to have tractors on our roadways, we'll have slow moving vehicles. And when there's an opening and a safe place for you to pass that vehicle, go ahead and move around that vehicle. But if it's not safe or there's a double yellow line, please wait until it's safe to move around that vehicle. We want everybody to get home safely. So that's our traffic tip Tuesday this week. Remember, buckle up, buckaroo. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, flu season. It's here. What doctors recommend to keep you and your family safe. Plus, an eight-year-old being hailed as a hero this morning after saving another student's life. This is CBS 2 News This Morning.
It's 523, almost 524. Welcome back. Doctors warning this could be a nasty flu season. They're urging Americans to get vaccinated. This year, they say those 65 years and older are advised to get a special shot with extra protection to boost their immune response. The CDC and other health experts, they'll hold a news conference about the flu later on this morning. An eight year old Oklahoma boy, he was honored Monday for saving his classmate at school. Now Garrett Brown jumped into action, performing the Heimlich maneuver when one of his classmates started choking. Mecca Rain has the story. Are you ready to hear who our real life hero is? When I say his name, I want you to clap louder than you've ever clapped before. Come on up, Mr. That's the eight-year-old who jumped into action when a fellow classmate was choking. It was chicken nugget day here in the cafeteria, which the kids absolutely love. Um, but on this particular day, um, there, during the third grade lunch, there was a student who was eating, took a bite, and um, began choking and couldn't breathe. And so immediately the boys around him stood up and yelled for help for me, who was the adult in the room at the time, and I was across the cafeteria. So as soon as I heard them yell, I ran over. However, there was a student who went way above and beyond uh, just calling for help and he immediately sprung into action. But little did anyone know Garrett Brown had some training on the Heimlich maneuver and he moved on it, dislodging the food from Cashton York's throat, a moment neither Cashton nor his parents will ever forget. That was extremely scary uh, to know that um, in a matter of seconds my child could have choked to death on food, you know, at school when you're not around. There's not enough words to, yes. to be grateful for saving him. That sentiment shared throughout the school and community, prompting this assembly in recognition for applying life-saving knowledge no one here knew he had. Cashton thanking him publicly. Thank you. And in case you're wondering how he knew what to do, his dad, his own hero who saved him, also taught him. My dad, he taught me whenever I was choking. And so he taught me how to do it in case anybody else was doing it. You're the best friend in the whole world that I ever had. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a decline in overdose deaths here in the Gem State. We dive into the data. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. After a three-hour block of FBI, you can join Brent Hunsaker, Janae Ryan, and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. This is the most commonly lost item in North America. Folks, what do you think it is? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, suing the Boise Police Department. Why one family is now calling for justice. Plus, catalytic converter thefts on the rise. Where you can go today to deter thieves from getting into yours. Plus, recovery continuing following Hurricane Ian. The hefty price tag taunting those looking to rebuild. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. A nice and cooler morning this morning as you start your Tuesday. Our current temperature right now 55 degrees southeast winds there at 8 miles an hour. That dew point 40 degrees. Going to show you our current, our morning temperatures as you start your Tuesday there. Mid 50s there by 9 a.m. getting into the 60s there by 10 a.m. Uh, upper 60s there by 11 a.m. and then 70s by noon for your Tuesday afternoon. Our temperatures right now. Mid 50s Boise, 49 out in Caldwell, Ontario there, upper 40s, and then Mountain Home there, 45 degrees. Going to continue to stay above average for our temperatures. Uh, normal for this time of year, 72. Our highs for today, 80 there, 
80 here Boise, 79 Mountain Home, Idaho City there 77, and then uh, going to be 80 across the board for today as well. Adventure Cast 70 by noon, 80 there by 6 p.m. That nice and sunny condition sticking around throughout the week. A dry week, highs in the low 80s, sunny all week, and folks, there's no change for now. Picture perfect fall conditions. Thank you, Marcos. It's 531 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there looking good. Everything still running smoothly. Uh, nothing to report looking good on both our main roads and secondary roads. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter in the newsroom, and we have new information on the double murder in Adams County over the weekend. The Adams County Sheriff says around 12.45 p.m. on Saturday, they got a call about a shooter at the Heartland Inn in New Meadows. When deputies and a medical team got there, they found both Sarah and Rory Meehan dead. Officials say 28-year-old John Hart murdered them and then drove away from the inn in a blue Subaru heading south on Highway 95. An off-duty deputy driving back into the county saw him on the road and got a hold of working deputies to pull him over. They did that north of Cambridge and arrested him. Hart is now in Washington County Jail, facing two counts of first-degree murder. Well, the family of a man who shot and was shot and killed by Boise police last October now suing the department. CBS 2's Michaela Alich explains their frustration. I want justice for my son. I called 911 because my son's mental health was in crisis and they responded by killing him. Zachary Snow's mom, Melissa Walton, spoke out about her son's death at the Ada County Courthouse. The family now suing the police department, saying officers wrongfully shot Snow. We're here seeking to redress those violations, those injustices committed by the Boise Police Department because they must be held accountable for their wrong. In surveillance footage released by the Boise Police Department, officers responded to a call about a suicidal man threatening to jump off a building. Police say they plan to check on Snow's welfare and arrest him on a warrant for failing to appear in court. Boise Police Center. In the video, you can see police attempt to approach Snow. That's when he pulled out what officers believed was a gun, but was actually a black cylinder-shaped portable speaker. In a statement from the city of Boise, the Gem County prosecutor determined the officers acted in self-defense, and his office would not be taking any action. But Snow's mother disagrees. Now she's demanding justice for her son's death. I can't take back that call. I can't change the fact that I thought reaching out to 911 was going to save my son's life. Nothing that I can do will ever bring my son back, but hopefully this will make the system change. And hopefully no one else has to suffer like we do. And we reached out to Boise police for a comment, but a spokesperson told us that because of pending litigation, they cannot provide any additional information. Well, police in California, they're searching for a family of four after authorities say they were abducted. Now the Merced County Sheriff's Office says an eight year old girl, her parents and her uncle were taken against their will. Now they're pleading for any help for any information. So far, we have no idea why the kidnapping. We have no motivation behind it. We just know that they are gone. We've got evidence to indicate that uh, the individuals involved in this destroyed evidence in an attempt to cover the tracks. Yeah, the Merced Sheriff's Office releasing images of the man believed to be the suspect. Authorities say there hasn't been a ransom demand or an attempt at contact. Well, catalytic converter thefts, they're a growing problem across the U.S. And today, you can get your cars etched at Nampa car dealerships, helping deter those thieves. Both today and tomorrow, Edmark Toyota, they'll etch for free from 5 to 9 p.m. Now, it's in partnership with Nampa Police, who continue to see more and more of those thefts. If you can't make it out this week, another etching event, it'll take place at Peterson Dodge on October 15th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. next Saturday. We've got those dates, times, and places on our website, 
And police say that etching may make thieves decide not to steal your catalytic converter since it can be traced. And it looks like overdoses may kill fewer people this year compared to the last two years. Up to July, data tracked by Health and Welfare shows 148 lives lost to overdose in Idaho. That's 55 fewer than that date in 2021. Now, millions of dollars from the federal government coming to Idaho to fight the overdose crisis may help keep that number low. 7.9 million is headed to Idaho to expand access to life-saving tools like opi opioid overdose reversal medications. They're expensive uh, and we want everyone to have access to them and that requires significant resources. Anyone on Medicaid can access life-saving tools like naloxone for free without a prescription at most pharmacies. You can also go to our website to learn how to order them online. And the oral arguments in the Planned Parenthood versus Idaho case rescheduled for 9 a.m. on Thursday morning. A court member's illness causing that delay. It's one of three Planned Parenthood lawsuits against the state over Idaho's new abortion laws. This hearing is expected to last two hours at the state Supreme Court. Turning to developing news this morning, the death toll continuing to climb following Hurricane Ian. Now more than 100 people dead, over half a million still without power this morning. Now rescue crews, they're going door to door in hard hit areas. They brought more than 2,000 people to safety so far. Cars lining up for bottled water, as you can see, as the hurricane's far reaching impact stretches into its second week. We finally got water last night. Yes. But it's yucky one. Rebuilding after Ian, one of the worst storms to hit the U.S., it's expected to cost billions of dollars. Now, President Biden set to visit Florida tomorrow to see that damage in person. And in the meantime, teams in Florida, they're cooking up a storm for survivors of Hurricane Ian. The disaster response team from World Central Kitchen setting up shop in Tampa, helping those in need. Being able to show up with a hot, comforting, nourishing plate of food, um, you know, is our way to show that we're thinking of you and we care about you and, you know, we want to do what we can to get you through this difficult time. In the meantime, hundreds of volunteers are making their way to Florida, helping feed those families. Now most of the prepared meals being trucked down to places hit hardest by Ian. As many as 20,000 meals a day given out through food distribution in sites in Fort Myer, Cape Corral and Port Charlotte. All right, let's switch gears, talk a little bit about the weather, because if you liked yesterday, you're going to love the rest of this week. Lots of sunshine and highs looking in the low 80s. Couldn't get better. Yeah, that's right, Sarah. Taking a look at our coffee forecast for today, sunny and warmer as that high pressure continues to build in our region. 80 are projected high for today. So uh, taking a look at that out the door forecast as you start your Tuesday, uh, get nice and cooler temperatures for this morning, but warming up there 66 at 11 a.m. Uh, 70s there by 1 p.m. and then upper 70s there by 3 and 5 p.m. this afternoon. That sunshine though sticking around for the week, folks. Current temperatures right now 50s Meridian, 46 out in Nampa, 49 Caldwell, and then 43 in CUNA. Mountain home there at 45, and then Glens Ferry, upper 40s there uh, as you uh, start your Tuesday morning. Our forecast for tomorrow, warming up at about 3 degrees, so our high today 80, tomorrow 83, so we're going to be staying in those low 80s throughout the week uh, as the week continues. Bus stop forecast for this morning. Pick up 55 degrees, lunchtime 70 degrees, and then that drop off this afternoon, a high of 77 degrees. So possibly wear a light jacket as you head out the door this morning, whether you're headed out to school or uh, headed out to work this morning. Temperature history, uh, gonna stay in that uh, near normal category. Uh, below normal, we saw those below normal temperatures last week, but gonna get into those near above normal categories as we see that high pressure bring those warmer conditions throughout the weeks, folks, but it's lots of sunshine with highs in the 80s. Thank you, Marcos. 540 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, seeing a steady, steady stream of cars out there this morning. Looking good. Uh, nothing to report on our main roads or secondary roads. Smooth sailing this morning. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 a.m or 93.1 FM 
for more team traffic updates. Well, hey, it's time for our question of the day. The question is, this is the most commonly lost item in North America. All right, what is it? Marcos, Ashley, I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, my, my first guess would probably be phone or keys. Ooh, keys, yeah. Because I lose my phone at least three times a week. See, as a woman, the first thing I think of is like hair ties and bobby pins mm. because we don't know where they go <laughs> after all. What are you thinking, Ashley? I, my first thought, like Marcos, was phone. I cannot tell you how many times I had to ask my mom to call my phone because I couldn't yeah. remember where I put it. <laughs> no, I love it. Have you guys heard of the tile, by the way? It, yeah. it, you keep it on your keys and it helps ping your phone, vice versa. Mm. Yes. So you never lose both. It's a great, and recently invested in it. That's why I'm so excited. All right, let's see what folks at home have to say. Joy says car keys. She's with you. What else do we have? Janet, your wallet. Definitely don't want to lose that. Don't want to lose that. Do not yeah. like when that happens. <laughs> that is a headache. <laughs> Eric, oh, the TV remote. Yeah. Oh, don't like when that one happens either. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. Especially that's... When, you're, when you're binging a good show. Oh, yeah, and then they ask you, are you still watching? And you can't find the remote to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, guys, if you think you know the answer, we still have an hour and 15 minutes to get your guesses in. You can do that by heading on down to our Facebook page or our Twitter. That's where you can find our question of the day post. You can get your guesses in and we'll read some more of your answers throughout the morning and reveal the answer right before CBS this morning. Still to come on CBS 2 News, heightened threats of nuclear action. We have the latest from Russia's war in Ukraine. Taking a look at your local forecast in Weezer today, sunny conditions with a high of 82 tonight, clear skies, mid 40s tomorrow, that sunshine returning with a high of 83. Ukrainian forces, they've announced more gains on the battlefield in areas Russia is trying to annex. But wins for Ukraine mean losses for Russia, and that's now raising concern about how on edge Vladimir Putin will respond. Now, CBS's Astrid Martinez has the latest. Russian troops are losing ground by the day in Ukraine. Ukrainian forces have advanced into the southern Kherson region, one of the four areas Russia recently announced it's annexing despite widespread condemnation. The battleground gains come after Russian soldiers were forced to retreat from the strategic town of Lehman, another region the West says is being illegally annexed by Moscow. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky says his army continues to advance and is promising to return life back to normal as quickly as possible for those in previously occupied Russian territories. Ukraine's recent victories, coupled with growing discontent at home, are significant blows to Vladimir Putin. CIA Chief Bill Burns tells CBS's Nora O'Donnell he's concerned with how the Russian president will respond. Putin cornered. Um, Putin, who feels his back against the wall, um, can be quite dangerous and reckless. He thinks he can tough it out with the Ukrainians and with the United States and with the West. The exiled mayor of Russian-occupied Melitopol says he expects a massive escalation in the war. I expect that uh, Putin will use nuclear weapons. Russian military has already stepped up attacks on civilian targets. In the city of Dnipro, tearful residents pay tribute to young lives taken in a rocket attack miles from the front line. Astrid Martinez, CBS News, New York. Well, in the meantime, the lower house of Russian parliament, they voted unanimously yesterday endorsing the treaties for those four regions of Ukraine to join Russia. Now, Ukraine and the rest insist those referendums during which votes were reportedly collected oftentimes door to door by armed Russian troops have no legal validity. And North Korea fired a ballistic missile over Japan early Tuesday. The Japanese prime minister says it flew over the country and landed in the Pacific Ocean. Alerts went out to evacuate buildings nearby and train service was suspended temporarily. It's the fifth weapons launch from North Korea in the last 10 days. Previous tests were short-range missiles that fell into the ocean before reaching Japan. The escalation is an apparent response to military drills the U.S. conducted with South Korea. Well, military teams in Hawaii are still working to defuel pipelines in Red Hill, Honolulu. 
That's after fuel leaked into neighbors water supply. After fuel is taken out of the pipelines, they'll need extensive repairs. And then more than a million gallons of fuel will be moved from the tanks by tankers to an undisclosed location. Because as long as the fuel is, a, you know, in those tanks, there is an imminent, you know, threat to the health and to the of, of our community and also uh, to the environment. The military still plans to complete defueling by July of 2024. Defueling, by the way, will cost about $280 million. Well, Ashley Marcos, fall officially here. These temperatures getting with the game, but I like that we're staying a little bit above the average. It's definitely making me want to go outside and actually just kind of stay outside the whole day if you can. <laughs> Definitely makes me feel, mm -hmm. yeah, very uh, warmer conditions. It makes me feel like summer's not quite over yet, yeah. Sarah, but I'm ready for the cool down, cooler so temperatures. Am I. Yeah. So I know <laughs> Ashley is too. I know, we've always talked about it. I love winter. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, uh, taking a look right now, though, at our current temperature, uh, mid 50s right now, southeast winds are eight miles an hour. Uh, current temperatures right now in the Meridian area, 52, 46 down in Nampa, Ontario there, 49, and then 43 degrees out in the CUNA area. A little cooler there uh, this morning. Mountain Helm there, mid 40s, and then Glens Ferry there, upper 40s. Our highs for today, about five to 10 degrees above normal, 80 Boise, 79 Mountain Home, uh, still in those warmer conditions for uh, this time of year, folks. Future cast, things are looking uh, fairly clear. Uh, no moisture headed our way. May see some gusty winds in the mountain regions, but folks, nice and clear. That sunshine sticking around through the weekend. So a good week to get out there and uh, do some yard work. Enjoy that sun and those warmer temperatures. So a dry week, highs in the low 80s sunny all week and no change as of now so that extended seven day forecast sunny skies on tuesday for today 80 degrees and we're going to be staying in those low 80s 81 there wednesday 82 thursday 81 there friday and then 80 throughout the weekend lows going to be uh, lower 50s to the mid 50s for your mornings and then taking a look at that extended mountain forecast Again, uh, mid 70s there, 76 tomorrow, sunny, 76 Thursday, uh, 75 there Friday, partly cloudy conditions, and then lows in the 30s. So pretty consistent weather, uh, no change for now, folks. So get out there and enjoy that sun and those warmer temperatres. Thank you, Marcos. 550 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there, steady stream of cars. But no reports of anything slowing you down. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News, international tourism reopening for the first time in over two years. We take you to Thailand. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 553. Welcome back. Frauds and scams becoming a growing problem on the popular peer-to-peer -peer payment service Zelle. Now that's according to a new report from the Office of Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren. The report it points to nearly 200,000 cases from four banks where customers claim they were tricked into making a payment. Now those cases amount to losses of around $213 million. That report also found the large banks that partly own Zelle, they've been reluctant to compensate customers who've been victimized. Well, several East Asian countries dropping their COVID restrictions. Japan opening to individual tourism a week from today and Thailand eliminating its remaining coronavirus entry rules on Saturday. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette, she's in the capital city of Bangkok. Whitney and Chris Mosley from Houston surveyed the city of Bangkok from the 64th floor of Labua at State Tower while traveling in Thailand for several weeks, shortly before the country dropped entry restrictions for tourists. Honestly, the tourism, it's going to be really nice to have it back in some of the areas. Almost 40 million tourists visited Thailand in 2019 before the pandemic hit. That was when Bangkok was ranked the world's most visited city for the fourth straight year. But a lot has happened since then. For much of the pandemic, Thailand had a complicated system of quarantines for anyone entering the country, which discouraged tourism. 
and that was devastating for the economy, considering that in 2019, international travelers made up an estimated 60 percent of tourism spending. The sector accounts for about a fifth of the country's gross domestic product and employment. More than one million Americans visited Thailand in 2019. We understand that we won't get back to you know over one million visitors right away. But our goal is to ensure that we continue the process of promoting to quality tourists. Labua, which has six bars and four restaurants, including two with two Michelin stars, relied on their profits the past couple years. What people missed during COVID is real experiences. We got special rates to stay at Labua and Capella, a new Bangkok hotel with elegant design, riverside suites and water views from a one Michelin starred restaurant that opened during the pandemic. It's been very, uh, very challenging to say the least. That said, we have discovered an amazing uh, local market that was just absolutely famished for travel. The hope is that international tourism will rebound to pre-pandemic levels in the next couple of years. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Bangkok, Thailand. And Thailand has extended its regular tourist visas from 30 to 45 days, encouraging longer visits for those who want to work remotely. Still to come on CBS 2 News, catalytic converter thefts, they're on the rise. Where you can go today to deter thieves from getting to yours. Plus, helping those in need following Hurricane Ian, how volunteers are getting warm meals to communities hit hardest by the storm. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather, they continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, suing the Boise Police Department why one family is now calling for justice. Plus, overdose deaths on the decline, why Idaho now doubling down on prevention. Plus, recovery continuing following Hurricane Ian, the hefty price tag taunting those looking to rebuild. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you of downtown Boise. It is Tuesday, October 4th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. Let's send it over to Marcos Guadarrama for a look at our weather forecast. Nice and chilly start to your Tuesday morning right now. Currently 55 degrees here in downtown Boise. Southeast winds there at 13 miles an hour. Going to show you our morning temperatures for your Tuesday. 56 there by about 9 a.m. Getting into the 60s around 10 and then 70s there by noon this afternoon. Temperatures right now across the region. 46 out in Caldwell, 44 down in the Mountain Home area, 37 out in Idaho City, and 47 in the Ontario area as well. Going to show you our almanac for today. Normal conditions, 72 degrees yesterday's high, 77. Today will be a little higher than 77 at about 80 degrees as that high pressure continues to build in the area. 79 down in Mountain Home. 79 Nampa and then 73 out in the mountain uh, McCall area 77 there Idaho City uh, that uh, adventure cast for today 70 degrees by noon 80s there by 6 p.m. and a quick look at what to expect this after uh, this over the next few days a dry week highs in the 80s sunny all week and no change for now. Thank you, Marco. 601 on your Tuesday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. Bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Yeah, nice steady stream out there, but not much to report. We are looking good with smooth sailing. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we have new information on the double murder in Adams County over the weekend. The Adams County Sheriff says around 12.45 p.m. on Saturday, they received a call about a shooter at the Heartland Inn in New Meadows. When deputies and a medical team got there, they found both Sarah and Rory Meehan dead. 
Officials say 28-year-old John Hart murdered them and then drove away from the inn in a blue Subaru heading south on Highway 95. An off-duty deputy driving back into the county saw him on the road and got a hold of working deputies to pull him over. They did that north, north of Cambridge and arrested him. Hart is now in Washington County Jail facing two counts of first-degree murder. And the family of a man shot and killed by Boise police last October now suing the department. The officers got a call he was trying to jump from an overpass. Investigators say as police approached him, Snow took a shooting stance and pulled out an object. That's when officers fired. The object was later found to be a portable speaker. I want justice for my son. I called 911 because my son's mental health was in crisis. And they responded by killing him. In a statement from the city of Boise, the Gem County prosecutor determined the officers acted in self-defense and his office would not be taking any action. CBS2 reached out to Boise police for comment, but a spokeswoman told us because of any pending litigation, they cannot provide any additional information. Well, police in California, they're searching for a family of four after authorities say that they were abducted. Now, the Merced County Sheriff's Office says an eight-year-old girl, her parents, and her uncle were taken against their will. Now they're pleading for help for any information. So far, we have no idea why the kidnapping. We have no motivation behind it. We just know that they are gone. We've got evidence to indicate that uh, the individuals involved in this destroyed evidence in an attempt to cover the tracks. The sheriff's office, they released images of the man believed to be the suspect. Authorities there say there hasn't been a ransom demand or any attempt at contact. Catalytic converter thefts, they're a growing problem across the U.S. And today, you can get your car etched at Nampa car dealerships, helping deter some of those thieves. You can do that both today and tomorrow. Edmark Toyota will etch from for free from 9 to 5. It's in partnership with Nampa police, who continue to see more and more thefts. Now, if you can't make it out this week, there is another etching event that'll take place at Peterson Dodge on October 15th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. next Saturday. We've got those dates, times, and places on our website. Please say the etching may make thieves decide not to steal your catalytic converter since it can be traced. Well, data from Health and Welfare isn't complete for this year. It does look like overdoses may kill, have killed fewer people this year compared to the last two years. Now, up to July, data tracked by Health and Welfare, it shows 148 lives lost to overdoses here in Idaho. That's about 55 fewer than that date back in 2021. And what may help keep that number low is the millions of dollars from the federal government coming into Idaho, helping fight our overdose crisis. Now our Angela Kernel shares how that will be spent. To save people's lives. That's the goal of Idaho's response to the opioid crisis program. They're your friends and your family. Part of it, expanding access to critical tools like overdose reversal medications, Narcan, and naloxone. The problem is it's awful, but there's also a lot of work being done to address that. The Idaho Harm Reduction Project helps people and organizations across the state access tools like naloxone, whether by mail or reaching people struggling with addiction where they are. Syringe service programs and like the mass distribution of overdose reversal medications and education about them have only been a thing since 2019 and really ramping up in 2020. And so I think it's increased dramatically from year to like year over year. Evan Burke works with the Harm Reduction Project. He says more money for them could mean saving more lives. They're expensive uh, and we want everyone to have access to them and that requires significant resources. Last year, his organization gave out about 5,000 boxes of Narcan across the state, saving at least 628 lives. Due to the rural nature of the state, having naloxone on hand can be really helpful because just the distance that EMS sometimes has to travel to somebody's location can take a long time. And more people with naloxone means more people surviving overdoses. This stuff is, is kind of happening a lot. Uh, and so the, the more of us that are informed and have this resource available in terms of sort of Narcan or Naloxone, um, just the safer the community and the society is. And anyone on Medicaid, they can access Naloxone for free without a prescription at most local pharmacies. 
You can also head to our website for how to order it online. Turning to developing news this morning, the death toll keeps climbing after Hurricane Ian devastated parts of Florida's Gulf Coast, especially around Fort Myer. More than 100 people dead, over half a million still without power this morning. Rescue crews, they're going door to door in hardest hit areas. They brought more than 2,000 people to safety so far. Cars lining up for bottled water as Hurricane's far reaching impact stretches into its second week. We finally got water last night, but it's, it's, but it's yucky water. Rebuilding after Hurricane Ian, one of the worst storms to ever hit the U.S., that's expected to cost billions of dollars. President Biden set to visit Florida tomorrow to see that damage in person. In the meantime, teams in Florida, they're cooking up a storm for survivors of Hurricane Ian. A disaster response team from World Central Kitchen setting up shop in Tampa, helping those in need. Being able to show up with a hot, comforting, nourishing plate of food, um, you know, is our way to show that we're thinking of you and we care about you. And, you know, we want to do what we can to get you through this difficult time. Yeah, in the meantime, hundreds of volunteers are making their way to Florida, helping to feed families. As many as 20,000 meals being given out each and every day at food distribution sites in those hardest hit areas. Now we've been talking this morning about this picture perfect fall weather. Sarah Marcos, do you have any plans to go outside, embrace the, the cool temperatures? I mean, I definitely like to get out on the green belt, head to the mm -hmm. park and uh, enjoy this, uh, these nice 80 degree temperatures, nice and warmer. I like to also see the leaves change on the trees. Oh, so yeah. that's one of my favorite. We're actually seeing that in some areas. So folks at home, if you have a great drive, maybe of, you know, of your favorite fall leaves changing, I know there's some great ones up in Idaho City, Garden Valley, just to name a few, but let us know where your favorite is because I'd love to go check that out. And definitely send in some pictures, right? Yeah, to, definitely. Yeah, for sure, but uh, <laughs> taking a look at that uh, ice uh, coffee forecast this morning, uh, 80 and sunny and warmer for your Tuesday, folks. Uh, looking at that out the door forecast as you start your Tuesday, uh, headed to school or headed to work 60s there by 11 a.m. 70s there by 1 p.m. and we are going to get into the upper 70s this afternoon. Nice and sunny conditions so a good day to get out there enjoy a nice walk on the green belt or a run this morning. Uh, current temperatures 50s here uh, out in Meridian 46 Nampa 46 there Caldwell and then a little cooler there 43 out in the CUNA area mountain home there mid 40s and then the Stanley area upper 20s a little cooler out there there's Sun Valley at 38 degrees this morning now tomorrow's forecast 70s there by noon and then 83 by 5 p.m. Nice and sunny. We are going to get a little warmer, but we're going to stable in those lower, uh, stabilize in those lower 80s as the rest of the week goes on. Bus stop forecast this morning 55 degrees clear, lunchtime 70, that drop off 77 degrees, nice and sunny conditions. So, bus stop Benny says, wear a nice light jacket this morning as you head out the door and then enjoy those nice warmer and sunny conditions later on. Sounds perfect. Thank you, Marco. 611 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking out there? Good morning. Off to a quiet start with the drive. It is a uh, good I-84 around Eagle Road. They had the uh, Eagle Road exit closed overnight until, uh, well, a little after uh, 5 or just before 5.30 or so this morning for paving there on Eagle Road, but that's all been taken care of. Uh, closure in place as of yesterday. Maple Grove barricades are up between McMillan and Goddard. That will be in place until around this Saturday. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Wyan. Thank you, Ron. When you get in the car, make sure you turn it to News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, five people on trial after the January 6 attack on the Capitol. The charges the Oath Keepers are facing. Plus, the former president may have a hand in the midterm elections, his influence on the primaries, and what may change come November. Hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Nearly 20% of people already have done this ahead of October. That answer, buying their Halloween candy. Yeah, it'll be here before we know it. 
All right, now for today's question. This is the most commonly lost item in all of North America. All right, folks, what do you think it is? This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.15. Welcome back. The January 6th committee, they say it. They, they say they plan to hold their final hearing next week. In the meantime, five alleged members of a far-right Oath Keepers group, they're on trial for their involvement in the Capitol riot. And the trial underway in Washington, federal court against the founders of the Oath Keepers and four members. Now, Elmer Stewart Rhodes and his associates, they're charged with seditious conspiracy in connection to the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. They could face up to 20 years in prison. Those five defendants are pleading not guilty. And former President Trump's influence is being felt in midterm races across the country. Nearly 200 candidates endorsed by the former president won their primaries. But that may be a different story come November. Experts studying election trends say former President Trump's endorsement may not see the same effect in the general election. Some Trump-backed candidates now representing the party in swing states falsely claimed the 2020 president presidential election was stolen. Some Republicans are concerned the rhetoric could set a dangerous precedent, leaving a potential split in party, ide party ideology and identity. Well, hey, before we um, head to weather, we want to tell you about a very special day today. It's, of course, National Taco Day. October 4th, that's the day to chow down. And wouldn't you know it, this year it falls on a Tuesday. So what we need to know, Marcos and Ashley, we already talked about some of our favorite places. Now, what is your favorite type of taco? Are you a hard shell? Are you a soft shell? Corn tortilla, flour tortilla? What's your favorite? I definitely like the corn tortilla and I like it spicy. I like a oh, spicy yeah. taco. Yeah. Ooh, spicy. Do you like spicy too, Ashley? I do, I do. And I'm also soft shell corn. But Sarah, what about you? I like it. Definitely into the corn tortilla, but I like the spicy guys. If you like it hot, maybe not the weather for today. It's feeling definitely more like fall out there. <laughs> yeah, nice uh, uh, start to your morning there, mid 50s. So a little chilly this morning as you head out the door. Southeast winds are at 13 miles an hour. Current temperatures, low 50s there, Meridian, upper 40s there in the Nampa, Caldwell region, and then uh, mid 40s out in the Mountain Home area. There's a 47 degrees out there in Glens Ferry. Our highs for today, as Sarah did mention, a little uh, warmer today, uh, 80 degrees yesterday's high, 77, 79 down in Mountain Home for today, uh, and then 79 out in the Caldwell, Nampa area as well. Looking at our future cast, staying fairly dry, a uh, chance of gusty winds uh, in the mountain area this afternoon, but here in the valley staying dry, that sunshine as that high pressure builds, and that's why we see those warmer temperatures for this week uh, and uh, possibly into the weekend. So a dry week ahead, highs in the low 80s, sunny all week, and then there's really no change for now. So those consistent low 80s throughout the week, 81 there Tuesday, 82 Thursday, uh, 81 there by Friday, and then <clears throat> that sunshine happening uh, into the weekend with lows in the 50s. Mountain forecast, mid 70s throughout the week, 75 there by Friday, partly cloudy conditions, but lower 70s and sunny by this weekend. Lows in the upper 30s and uh, that sunshine, as I said, sticking around, folks. Yeah, looking picture perfect. Thank you, Marcos. 618 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. All right, doing okay. Nothing uh, major going with 84. We've yet to get the emerge slowing, really even uh, moderate volume in a pocket or two coming east on 84, for example, but uh, things haven't fully kicked in, of course, still a little too early. Good to go all the way around. Don't forget the construction zone, Highway 2026. A lot of work near Highway 16 and even a little bit near Star Road. Got to be careful there. No buildups, of course, this time of the morning. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And before we go, here's Traffic Tip Tuesday from Boise Police Corporal Kyle Wills. Hello, everybody. It's Corporal Wills back with another Traffic Tip Tuesday. Today, I want to talk about, first of all, this beautiful weather we're having. That means it's fall in Idaho. Well, fall in Idaho also means that we have a few more slow moving vehicles on our roadways. 
primarily, typically in Idaho, from farm equipment and farm machinery. So what do we do as drivers when we approach those slow moving vehicles, number one? And if we're the one driving the slow moving vehicle, what is our requirement? So I wanna hit on both of those things. First, the easiest one is if we are driving the slow moving vehicles, we need to make sure that it's below 25 miles an hour. You can't consider yourself a slow moving vehicle above 25 miles an hour in the state of Idaho. Number two, we need those four way flashers on and we need a slow moving vehicle sign in the back. And that's typical the orange triangle that you see at the back of a piece of equipment, uh, farm equipment, tractors, that sort of thing. So if you're in that slow moving vehicle, please make sure that, that you do that. Now, as an added protection and added piece of safety, a lot of folks will use a pilot vehicle along with it. It may just be a second vehicle, a pickup or something with its four-way four flashers on. And that's certainly always a good thing because it's extra safe, although it's not required by our law. Now, as a driver, as we approach those vehicles, and even here in Boise, we'll often come up behind those slow moving vehicles, those tractors trying to move from one field to another. What is our responsibility and what do we do? I think the biggest thing we want to remember is we want everybody to get to where they're going safely, first of all. So getting frustrated or angry or driving aggressively around that equipment is not going to help anybody, whether it's the driver or those around the, the slow moving vehicle. So we encourage you to just slow down, understand that that's part of the Idaho way of life is that we're going to have tractors on our roadways, we'll have slow moving vehicles. And when there's an opening and a safe place for you to pass that vehicle, go ahead and move around that vehicle. But if it's not safe or there's a double yellow line, please wait until it's safe to move around that vehicle. We want everybody to get home safely. So that's our Traffic Tip Tuesday this week. Remember, buckle up, buckaroo. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, flu sees it. It's here. What doctors recommend to keep both you and your family safe. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 624. Welcome back. Doctors warn this could be a nasty flu season. They're urging Americans to get vaccinated. Now this year, those 65 and over advised to get a special shot with extra protection, helping boost their immune response. Now the CDC and other health experts, they're set to hold a news conference about the flu later on this morning. Well, an eight year old Oklahoma boy, he was honored yesterday for saving his classmate at school. Now, Garrett Brown, he jumped into action, performing the Heimlich maneuver when a classmate started choking. Now, Mecca Rain has the story. Are you ready to hear who our real life hero is? When I say his name, I want you to clap louder than you've ever clapped before. Come on up, Mr. That's the eight-year-old who jumped into action when a fellow classmate was choking. It was chicken nugget day here in the cafeteria, which the kids absolutely love. Um, but on this particular day, um, there, during the third grade lunch, there was a student who was eating, took a bite, and um, began choking and couldn't breathe. And so immediately the boys around him stood up and yelled for help for me, who was the adult in the room at the time, and I was across the cafeteria. So as soon as I heard them yell, I ran over. However, there was a student who went way above and beyond uh, just calling for help and he immediately sprung into action. But little did anyone know Garrett Brown had some training on the Heimlich maneuver and he moved on it, dislodging the food from Cashton York's throat, a moment neither Cashton nor his parents will ever forget. That was extremely scary uh, to know that uh, in a matter of seconds my child could have choked to death on food, you know, at school when you're not around. There's not enough words to, yes. to be grateful for saving him. That sentiment shared throughout the school and community, prompting this assembly in recognition for applying life-saving knowledge no one here knew he had. Cashton thanking him publicly. Thank you. And in case you're wondering how he knew what to do, his dad, his own hero who saved him, also taught him. My dad, he taught me whenever I was choking. And so he taught me how to do it in case anybody else was doing it. You're the best friend in the whole world I ever had. 
Still to come on CBS 2 News, a decline in overdose deaths in the Gem State. We dive into the data. And a look at our question of the day. This morning on CBS 2 News, suing the Boise Police Department, why one family is calling for justice. Plus, catalytic converter thefts, they're on the rise, where you can go today to deter thieves from getting to yours. Plus, recovery continuing following Hurricane Ian, the hefty price tag taunting those looking to rebuild. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Taking a look at our current temperature right now, 55 degrees downtown Boise, southeast winds at 13 miles an hour. Going to see nice and uh, chilly conditions this morning, but going to be warming up this afternoon as that high pressure builds in our area. Our morning temperatures there, mid 50s this morning, getting into the 60s there by 10 a.m., uh, 66 degrees by 11 a.m., and then 70 degrees there by noon today. Looking at our temperatures right now, 46 out in Caldwell, Ontario 47, 44 down in Mountain Home, and then there's the Weezer at 58 degrees, Baker City there, uh, 36 degrees. Going to stay above normal for today. A look at our highs, 80 degrees here, Boise, 79 down in Mountain Home, 79 Caldwell, and then 73 degrees out in the Caldwell area. A good morning to get out there, go for a walk, go for a run, 55 this morning, 70 degrees by noon, and then 80 degrees there by 6 p.m. Thank you, Marco. 631 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. Yeah, traffic flowing smoothly, but uh, no reports of anything slowing you down. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter in the newsroom and we have new information on the double murder in Adams County over the weekend. The Adams County Sheriff says around 12.45 p.m. on Saturday, a call came in about a shooter at the Heartland Inn in New Meadows. When deputies and a medical team got there, they found both Sarah and Rory Meehan dead. Officials say 28-year-old John Hart murdered them and then drove away from the inn in a blue Subaru, heading south on Highway 95. An off-duty deputy driving back into the county saw him on the road and got a hold of working deputies to pull him over. They did that north of Cambridge, arresting him, and Hart is now in Washington County Jail, facing two counts of first-degree murder. Well, the family of a man shot and killed by Boise police last October, they're now suing the department. And CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains their frustrations. I want justice for my son. I called 911 because my son's mental health was in crisis and they responded by killing him. Zachary Snow's mom, Melissa Walton, spoke out about her son's death at the Ada County Courthouse. The family now suing the police department, saying officers wrongfully shot Snow. We're here seeking to redress those violations, those injustices committed by the Boise Police Department because they must be held accountable for their wrong. In surveillance footage released by the Boise Police Department, Officers responded to a call about a suicidal man threatening to jump off a building. Police say they plan to check on Snow's welfare and arrest him on a warrant for failing to appear in court. In the video, you can see police attempt to approach Snow. That's when he pulled out what officers believed was a gun, but was actually a black cylinder-shaped portable speaker. In a statement from the city of Boise, the Gem County prosecutor determined the officers acted in self-defense and his office would not be taking any action. But Snow's mother disagrees. Now she's demanding justice for her son's death. I can't take back that call. I can't change the fact that I thought reaching out to 911 was going to save my son's life. Nothing that I can do will ever bring my son back, but hopefully this will make the system change. And hopefully no one else has to suffer like we do. We reached out to Boise police for comment, but a spokesperson told us because of any pending litigation, they can't provide any additional information. 
Well, switching gears, police in California, they're searching for a family of four after authorities say that they were abducted. Though the county sheriff's office says an eight year old girl, her parents and her uncle were taken against their will. Now they're pleading for help for any information. So far, we have no idea why the kidnapping. We have no motivation behind it. We just know that they are gone. We've got evidence to indicate that uh, the individuals involved in this destroyed evidence in an attempt to cover the tracks. The Merced Sheriff's Office released images of the man believed to be the suspect. Authorities say they haven't had a ransom demand or any attempt at contact. Well, catalytic converter thefts, they're a growing problem across the U.S. And today, you can get your car etched at Nampa car dealerships, helping deter some of those thieves. You can do that both today and tomorrow. It's at Edmark Toyota, who will etch them for free from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's in partnership with Nampa Police. If you can't make it out this week, another etching will take place at Peterson Dodge. That's on October 15th from 9 to 4 next Saturday. We've got these dates, times, and places on our website. Please say the etching may make thieves decide not to steal your catalytic converter because they can be traced. And it looks like overdoses may kill fewer people this year compared to the last two years. Up to July, data tracked by Health and Welfare shows 148 lives lost to overdose in Idaho, and that's 55 fewer than that date in 2021. Now millions of dollars from the federal government coming to Idaho to fight the overdose crisis may help keep that number low. 7.9 million is heading to Idaho to expand access to life-saving tools like opioid overdose reversal medications. They're expensive uh, and we want everyone to have access to them and that requires significant resources. Anyone on Medicaid can access life-saving tools for free without a prescription at most pharmacies. You can also go to our website to learn how to order them online. And the oral arguments in the Planned Parenthood versus Idaho case rescheduled for 9 a.m. Thursday morning. A court member's illness causing this delay. It's one of three Planned Parenthood lawsuits against the state over Idaho's new abortion laws. This hearing is expected to last about two hours at the state Supreme Court. To developing news, the death toll continues to climb after Hurricane Ian devastated portions of Florida's Gulf Coast. More than 100 people are dead, over a million still without power this morning. Rescue crews, they're going door to door in hardest hit areas. They have brought more than 2000 people to safety so far. These cars you see lined up for bottled water service in the hurricanes far reaching impacts as it stretches into its second week. We finally got water last night, but, Back. It's, but it's yucky water. Rebuilding after Hurricane Ian is expected to cost billions of dollars. Now, President Biden set to visit Florida tomorrow to see that damage in person. All right, Ashley Marcos, a beautiful start to our day, feeling still pretty chilly as you're stepping out the door, but these temperatures are picture perfect. Loving fall, we're finally getting with the game, but still we want to note it's a little bit above average, which I'm really liking, guys. Going to be nice and warm for today, Sarah. Going to show you our coffee forecast for today. 80 sunny and warmer for today as that high pressure builds, bringing those warmer conditions. That out the door forecast this morning as you start your Tuesday, uh, 66 there, uh, 11 a.m., 73 there by 1 p.m., and then getting into the upper 70s this afternoon. But those sunny, uh, that sunshine is going to be sticking around today and through the week. A look at our current temperatures 51 meridian, 50 out in Nampa. 46 in Caldwell and then 43 out in CUNA, a little cooler out there. There's a uh, Stanley 28 in the McCall area, 40 degrees. Now uh, looking at our forecast for tomorrow, 70, uh, 50s in the morning, 71 degrees there by noon, and then we'll be warming up uh, about three degrees by tomorrow as uh, once again, we see that high pressure build uh, in the region. So bus stop forecast this morning, clear and sunny, 55 degrees this morning, 70 degrees by lunchtime, and then 
as you pick the kids up from the, uh, the bus stop, 77 degrees, nice and sunny conditions once again, folks. Uh, bus stop Benny wearing, uh, says wear a light jacket this morning as you head out the door as it is a little cooler. And then taking a quick look at the uh, temperature history here in Boise, going to continue to stay in that near normal, slightly above normal category. Uh, not necessarily the well above normal, but we are trending in those five to 10 degrees above normal categories for the next several days as that high pressure continues to build. But uh, get out there, enjoy the 80 degree weather and that sunshine, Sarah. Thank you, Marco. 639 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. All right, thanks, Sarah. Good morning, folks. Uh, not much going. I-84, a little bit of uh, volume kicking in, of course, this time of the morning, but uh, no big delays. A little crowding merge areas. Been uh, pretty minimal, and things going well. Most uh, major routes have yet to kick in, much with volume uh, away from the freeways either. Maple Grove closure in effect uh, between McMillan and Goddard until this Saturday for construction there. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And now it's time for our question of the day. That question is, this is the most commonly lost item in North America. All right, Marcos, Ashley, sticking with your answers. I think I'm definitely going to stick with phone, Sarah. Or, phone. or air phone. Uh, uh, Air, uh, AirPods of some sort, like <laughs> earphones. Yeah, all right, Ashley, what do you think? I think I'm switching my answer to socks. You know, they go from socks. the washer to the dryer and then they're never seen again. Uh, I don't mean, know what happens to them, but. <laughs> I go back to Costco, I keep buying them, they keep disappearing. All right, Jen says glasses. Yeah, if I don't have them on my head. <laughs> and if not, I'm tapping my head to make sure they're there. Same goes with sunglasses. It's Very. a good one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good guess. All right, Richard, he's with you, Marcos. He says, your cell phone. Some good guesses this morning. Yeah, we tend to lose a lot of things, guys. <laughs> All right, if you think you know the answer, we still have 15 minutes to get those in. You can do that on our Facebook page or, of course, our Twitter, and we'll reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News, heightened threats of nuclear action. We have the latest from Russia's war in Ukraine. Here's a look at your local forecast today in Weezer. Sunny conditions with a high of 82 tonight. Clear skies with lows in the mid 40s and tomorrow sunny with a high of 83. Thank you, Marcos. Ukrainian forces, they've announced more gains on the battlefield in those areas Russia is currently trying to annex. But wins for Ukraine means losses for Russia. That's raising concern about how on edge Vladimir Putin will then respond. CBS's Astrid Martinez has the latest. Russian troops are losing ground by the day in Ukraine. Ukrainian forces have advanced into the southern Kherson region, one of the four areas Russia recently announced it's annexing despite widespread condemnation. The battleground gains come after Russian soldiers were forced to retreat from the strategic town of Lehman, another region the West says is being illegally annexed by Moscow. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky says his army continues to advance and is promising to return life back to normal as quickly as possible for those in previously occupied Russian territories. Ukraine's recent victories, coupled with growing discontent at home, are significant blows to Vladimir Putin. CIA Chief Bill Burns tells CBS's Nora O'Donnell he's concerned with how the Russian president will respond. Putin cornered. Um, Putin, who feels his back against the wall, um, can be quite dangerous and reckless. He thinks he can tough it out with the Ukrainians and with the United States and with the West. The exiled mayor of Russian-occupied Melitopol says he expects a massive escalation in the war. I expect that uh, Putin will use nuclear weapons. Russian military has already stepped up attacks on civilian targets. In the city of Dnipro, tearful residents pay tribute to young lives taken in a rocket attack miles from the front line. Astrid Martinez, CBS News, New York. 
and Russian parliament. They voted unanimously yesterday to endorse the treaties for those four regions of Ukraine to join Russia. In the meantime, Ukraine and the West insist those referendums have no legal validity. And North Korea fired a ballistic missile over Japan early this morning. The Japanese prime minister says it flew over the country and landed in the Pacific Ocean. Alerts went out to evacuate buildings nearby and train service was suspended temporarily. It's the fifth weapons launch from North Korea in the last 10 days. Previous tests were short range missiles that fell into the ocean before they could reach Japan. The escalation is an apparent response to military drills the U.S. conducted with South Korea. Well, military teams in Hawaii, they're working to defuel pipelines near Red Hill, Honolulu. That's after a fuel leaked into neighbors' water supplies. Now, after fuel is taken out of those pipelines, they'll need extensive repairs. And then more than 100 million gallons of that fuel will be moved from tanks by tankers to an undisclosed location. Because as long as the fuel is, a, you know, in those tanks, there is an imminent, you know, threat to the health and to the of, of our community and also uh, to the environment. The military still plans to complete that defueling by July of 2024. Defueling will cost about $280 million. Well, Sarah Marcos, we've talked about how beautiful our fall weather is, but I want to know what are your favorite fall activities? Oh, hands down, apple picking. Sorry, that was oh, quick. Fun. But. <laughs> hey, you know what you like? <laughs> I'm, I'm in the mood, guys. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to be like Betty Crocker, but I kind of want to make an apple pie. I'm in the mood for a little bit of baking. Well, if you do, bring it to the newsroom. Oh, we definitely will. I yeah. enjoy going to the pumpkin patch. I, I love Halloween, so that's that's my thing. The leaves uh, turning colors and uh, going to the green belt and what uh, just beautiful sights here in Boise. So that's that's what I enjoy to doing for this time of year. But uh, folks, uh, right now, uh, gonna see warmer conditions for today. Uh, high pressure uh, gonna bring those warmer and sunny conditions to our region. Our current temperature though right now, uh, mid 50s this morning, downtown Boise, southeast winds there at 13 miles an hour. Current temperatures, uh, nice and uh, cooler, uh, low 50s there, Nampa, Meridian there, Caldwell 46, and then the Mountain Home area, mid 40s as you head out the door on this Tuesday. Highs for today, uh, 80 degrees, a little warmer than yesterday here in Boise, 79 Mountain Home, and then 79 uh, Caldwell area. Uh, Gonna stay dry uh, for the next couple of days. As I said, that high pressure uh, bringing us those warmer, sunny, and then those drier conditions. So gonna be a good week to get out there and enjoy that sunshine and then the warmer temperatures. So a dry week ahead, highs in the low 80s, sunny all week, and then no change as of now. So that extended forecast, sunny skies for your Tuesday. Going to be staying in those low 80s throughout the week, 81 there Wednesday, 82 on Thursday, 81 there Friday, and then lows in the 50s with lots of sunshine. Mountain forecast, mid 70s across, uh, across the board there, 76 Wednesday, 76 Thursday, and then partly cloudy there Friday, lows in the upper 30s. Thank you, Marco. 650 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic. All morning long, we're sending it to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. And Ron, uh, we have reports of a crash out at um, Eagle and Pine. Indeed, one right in the intersection pretty much, kind of the north end of the intersection. Pickup towing a utility trailer and another pickup. Uh, looks like a rear end type accident. And uh, police have just showed up, Meridian Police on scene. We've got uh, the northbound left lane of Eagle Block. Well, actually two left lanes, one lane getting by to the right. And then uh, basically east westbound traffic on Pine for right now is blocked. Well, uh, traffic heading east can't turn on to Eagle Road northbound. So uh, that's a spot to um, keep track of and steer clear of if you're getting ready to get out the door and be traveling through that area here in the next little bit. I-84 traffic pretty minimal on any merge crowding. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you tune it to News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, international tourism reopening for the first time in over two years. We take you to Thailand.
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 654. Welcome back. Several East Asian countries dropping their COVID restrictions. Japan opening to individual tourists a week from today. And in Thailand, they eliminated their remaining coronavirus entry rules back on Saturday. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette, she's in the capital city of Bangkok. Whitney and Chris Mosley from Houston surveyed the city of Bangkok from the 64th floor of Labua at State Tower while traveling in Thailand for several weeks, shortly before the country dropped entry restrictions for tourists. Honestly, the tourism, it's going to be really nice to have it back in some of the areas. Almost 40 million tourists visited Thailand in 2019 before the pandemic hit. That was when Bangkok was ranked the world's most visited city for the fourth straight year. But a lot has happened since then. For much of the pandemic, Thailand had a complicated system of quarantines for anyone entering the country, which discouraged tourism. And that was devastating for the economy, considering that in 2019, international travelers made up an estimated 60 percent of tourism spending. The sector accounts for about a fifth of the country's gross domestic product and employment. More than one million Americans visited Thailand in 2019. We understand that we won't get back to, you know, over one million visitors right away. But our goal is to ensure that we continue the process of promoting to quality tourists. Labua, which has six bars and four restaurants, including two with two Michelin stars, relied on their profits the past couple years. What people missed during COVID is real experiences. We got special rates to stay at Labua and Capella, a new Bangkok hotel with elegant design, riverside suites and water views from a one Michelin starred restaurant that opened during the pandemic. It's been very, uh, very challenging to say the least. That said, we have discovered an amazing uh, local market that was just absolutely famished for travel. The hope is that international tourism will rebound to pre-pandemic levels in the next couple of years. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Bangkok, Thailand. And there is good news. Thailand has extended its regular tourist visas from 30 days to 45 days, helping encourage longer visits and those who want to work remotely. Cool stuff. All right, now it's time for our question of the day. This is the most commonly lost item in North America. What is it? The answer is cell phone chargers. All right, we were close, guys. All right, yeah, don't forget to charge your phone this morning, guys, and don't lose it. We'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.